Another year, another weekend of gathering around a computer screen to watch PaizoCon 2024. What did they cook up for us at the Paizo headquarters this time? Lots of little updates. Probably because there's a lot of books coming out in the following year. According to my calculations, it's currently May, so the Tian Sha World Guide and Howl of the Wild have just been released. Then there were special panels in the next three books. The final remaster book, Player Core 2, the Tian Sha Character Guide, and the War of Immortals book in October, which contains the Exemplar and Animist classes, and is sort of coupled with the Divine Mysteries lore book. There was also a panel on adventure paths, and other miscellaneous panels I didn't watch, including a lot of Starfinder news, such as a playtest adventure being released in September 2024. Now if you're like me, you might have been curious about the Pathfinder board game Elemental Stones. We learned a bit more today that might reveal why Paizo released a board game in the first place. That's because there's another board game coming called Pathfinder Quest, which will be going to Backer Kit in September, and it's a co-op game that appears, on preliminary analysis, to be a board game version of Pathfinder. I suspect that Elemental Stones was a test run of Paizo's board game manufacturing ability. Then the new books will be Battle Cry, with the new Guardian and Commander classes currently being playtested, which were apparently extremely popular, and they revealed a new Spring rulebook called the NPC Core, which is a bestiary like Monster Core, but full of NPCs, like a cheese salesman. The remaster panel talked about the final Player Core 2 book, which will then complete the remaster project. Player Core 1 remastered 8 classes, 8 ancestries, and 3 versatile heritages, and Player Core 2 will be similar, including the Kolo, which is the renamed Knoll, Kobold, which are no longer tiny dragon worshippers, but worship any powerful species, and Tengu are given the ability to fly like the ancestries in Howl of the Wild, which is like a reliable 15-foot jump, and Tripkey, frog dudes that used to be named Gripply. The 3 versatile heritages are Damper, if you have a vampire mom, Dragon Blood, if you have a Dragon Dad, and Duskwalker. If you were so good at killing undead, the people who hate undead turned you undead so you could keep killing undead. Then we got more info on the classes. Alchemists will have their alchemical items split between daily items and encounter items, called versatile vials, and apparently got the biggest remaster. Barbarians can now rage multiple times per encounter, and it's a free action. Champions also got a big remaster and follow a cause, which doesn't necessarily require sanctification if you were worried about that. Investigators got more options if they have a bad roll on devise a stratagem, but it wasn't totally clear what that was. Oracles got a big remaster, focus spells no longer curse them, but their curse gets advanced with a new condition called curse bound from specific actions or feats. For monks, key was renamed chi, and for swashbucklers, they now have special actions called bravado actions, which give panache more reliably. Then the God's Reign panel. Remember, War of Immortals is a new book with two new classes, the Exemplar and the Animist. However, it's also a big event that spans multiple books and adventure paths, chronicling a large god war and the death of Gorum. We found out that it's Achekek that kills Gorum, the mantis assassin, and his death causes divine blood to spill all over people and give them mythic godly powers. The book contains the two classes and has more divine themed class options like the Avenger, a rogue class archetype based off the Pathfinder 1 Slayer. Mythic abilities slot into a character like a free archetype. From level 1 to 10 you have a mythic calling and then afterwards you fulfill your mythic destiny and get crazy powers. It won't affect the numbers of the system as in you won't add an extra proficiency bonus or something. You'll just get crazy new actions or abilities and powers, like being an archfiend or an apocalypse rider, which will eventually lead you to immortality. And the book will also contain mythic monsters, which also contain special powers you'll probably need your mythic powers to defeat. Then there's a companion lore book called Divine Mysteries, which will detail the new gods of the setting after Gorum dies. That segues nicely into the upcoming adventures, Pray for Death, where you play as a red mantis assassin and actually witness the death of Gorum, Curtain Call, where you're putting on an opera of your previous exploits when the War of Immortals occurs partway through and Pooh hits the fan, that's a direct quote. Then Triumph of the Tusk, you play as dignitaries visiting the Hold of Belkson, who are trying to build alliances in the wake of Gorum's death and the ensuing Orc Pantheon shakeup. Then a newly announced Spore War, where you join the Elves of Kionan fighting against the Demon Tree Razor and his fungal armies. Watch my lore video if you want some more context on why that's such a big deal. Then there was another Tian Sha panel, which I'll get into more detail when it releases, but it will include new monk stances, magus studies, inventor options, and new heritages. The selling point are the six new ancestries. Samsarin, reincarnating blue people, the Tanuki, the trickster raccoons, Wyang, living shadow puppets, Sarangay, small minotaurs with a forehead gem, Yaksha, who are creatures from the first world who swear a vow, and Yaogwai, nature shapeshifters. Hope you enjoyed Pi 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 Pi
Pi, 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 Pi,